515 now. Welcome back. Cleveland Clinic has one of the largest liver transplant programs in the country, and very rarely do recipients ever get the chance to find out who gave them the gift of life. But tonight, senior health correspondent Monica Robbins has a two part story about a man who learned who his donor was because what happened to him made national headlines. Here is part one. Scott Harold quit drinking after a trip to the hospital and his doctor told him this. Look, if you want to continue to drink, I'll probably see you later. I'd go home, get all your affairs together, and if you want to make amends with people, make amends. He said, but I will see you, but it'll be probably by the end of the year and in the morgue. Lisa Callahan is Scott's older sister. I couldn't fix him, but I had to be a support for him. Um, and I didn't want to give up on him, but it was tearing the family apart. Um, the kids, you know, really struggled with his alcohol use. I was losing my family. My, my daughter was kind of turned against me and I needed my family back. For two years, Scott embraced sobriety, but had no idea recovery was just beginning. Thought I had COVID, you know, when did the COVID test, came back negative, and then I just got sicker than a dog. After years of drinking, Scott's liver gave up. They rushed him to Cleveland Clinic. Scott in and out of consciousness, but he heard the doctors tell him he needed a liver transplant. 20 years or 30 years of drinking wasn't worth that day I woke up in the hospital. I asked them, I said, how is he doing? And the nurse started talking about hospice. On Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021, Scott's name appeared on the liver transplant list. Five days later, the clinic transplant team called in the middle of the night. They were ready for the 12 hour surgery. We're surviving. It didn't take long for Scott to realize his gift of life came at the end of someone else's. You want to know, but you don't want to know because you know that for you to live, someone else had to die. Our joy is somebody else's sadness. Limited details came in a letter from the donor's family about their son. He loved to help others and was the most caring son, brother, grandson, and friend. He proved this to us when he made the decision at 16 to be an organ donor. Now, coming up at 6, I'll bring you the rest of the story and the ironic twist that provided a life-saving liver for Scott. And Scott gets to meet the family of the person who helped save his life. And you will likely remember his story, too, because it was all over the media a couple of years ago when it happened. Now, I don't know all of the rules or intricate details of donations, but... Uh, it was, it's always been my understanding that livers would not be given to alcoholics. Well, terminal liver disease is um, about half of the liver transplants, and the only effective treatment is a liver transplant. The problem is that was the old thinking, right. and then they went to like a six-month waiting period, but now a lot of facilities are looking at that six months and saying, because so many people were dying right. within the middle Which of is... that. Right, so what happened now is uh, Cleveland Clinic does not hold the six month thing, but keep in mind, Scott had two years of sobriety before he got his liver transplant. Okay, it's great. great. I can't wait to see the I know, ironic I'm looking forward twist. to the, the second part at six. Okay. Thanks, Monica. Thank you.